Hi YouTube, hi BC, it's Rob here with another video and uh, I'm going to show on this video 10 great albums by Manchester artists and this is uh, part of a contest for uh, Randall Nelson over in America set three questions and he wanted us to show um, some records from where we're from so I've decided I'm going to show 10, do a bit of a top 10 in no particular order, just uh, really good albums um, and there's a couple of other questions at the end of the video. So the first album I want to show is this one from 1987. The Happy Mondays and Squirrel and G-Man. 24 hour party people, plastic face, can't smile white on. That's the, the name of the album, pretty bizarre. So this came out in, like I say, 87. And this is a real trailblazer for what became known as the Mad Chester scene uh, in the late 80s. Um, every track on here is it's my favourite Happy Mondays album. Um, Cuff Dam, Great Start, Tart Tart, uh, Russell, 24-hour uh, party people, great track, Oasis as well, Sean Ryder, um, you know, funny lyrics and just a great groove on this album. Just gets you up in the mood for a Friday night. Superb album by The Happy Mondays from 1987. Next album I want to show is, um, I received it as a, a package, some BCLT from uh, another uh, vinyl community uh, member called Martin Parrott, the vinyl scavenger, if you want to go and check Martin out. Um, I did meet him at a VC meetup um, last year uh, and he was uh, really generous sending me a couple of records and he sent me this album which is an album I've been after for a while uh, Revenge of the Goldfish by the Inspiral Carpets so the Inspiral Carpets um, from Oldham but we're calling them from Mad Chester for this video so this has got the lyrics with it as well 12 tracks on this album a nice label there as well. So the Inspirals have done four studio albums, really. Um, like I say, this one's from 92. They're all strong. They're all strong, the Inspirals albums. Um, this has got Dragging Me Down, which was a pretty big hit for the Inspirals. Two Worlds Collide, Generation and Bitches Brew. So four strong singles and altogether 12 tracks. Well worth checking out the Inspiral Carpets and Revenge of the Goldfish. The next album I want to show is one I've never shown on my channel before. Uh, it's an album, I think it's from last year or the year before, 2019. So it's a Manchester sort of collaboration called White Horses. And this album is called Hard Times. So a bit of a homage to kind of Sergeant Peppers there. Um, it's on a gatefold. And White Horses is, is kind of the brainchild of Don Thomas. And Don Thomas uh, is sort of a producer and a uh, record collector. And um, he was the co-founder of um, Finest Keepers Records with Andy Vortel. So big part of the Manchester scene. Um, they released the first, I think it was uh, the first release was Snowball in 2014. Um, and this is um, a collaboration of different artists, really, from Badly Drawn Boy to LaRue uh, to Griff Reese from the um, Super Furry Animals. John Grant's on here. There's a cover of I Saw the Light. There's a lot of cover versions here, um, Satellite of Love. Um, it's an enjoyable album and um, yeah, picked it up earlier this year. So White Horses and Hard Times. Another album I want to show is one that I picked up for a couple of quid from a boot sale um, a couple of months ago. It's a um, magazine and the correct use of soap. So third album by a magazine. Um, I didn't really, I wasn't that sort of um, familiar with this album. It's on Virgin. 
Um, so Howard DeVoto left the Buzzcocks and wanted to have a, a little bit more sort of a progressive sound uh, with magazine. Uh, John McGeoch is on the uh, guitar on here. And, um, you know, he left magazine to join Susie and the Banshees and uh, the sound that on guitar that he produces is like no other. Sadly passed away in his sleep, age 48. Um, and Barry Adams is on here as well. Someone who's worked with Nick Cave. Um, so magazine were real sort of um, <laughs> a bit of a super group before they became sort of famous, really, I suppose. Howard DeVoto leaving the Buscocks at the time was quite quite a surprise. Um, but he had his reasons. This is a really strong album. Um, there's a, certainly a Bowie influence on it to me. Um, but, you know, this is one of those albums that, because it's magazine's third album, and at the time in 1980, there was, you know, so much around Joy Division. I think it kind of, because magazines split up as well, it sort of slipped under the radar. It's well worth checking out if you do find this album, um, or even stream it and see what you think of it. I really enjoyed it. The Correct Use of Soap by a magazine from 1980. Another album that I picked up this year, earlier this year, is Peter Hook and the Light. Uh, and this is the Movement Tour 2013 in Dublin. So I've seen these albums knocking around at record fairs for 12 quid and I've always kind of passed them by really. I was always a little bit sceptical about um, Peter Hook um, and his sort of, when he left New Order. But the sound on this, it takes your breath away at times. It does sound like Joy Division. Um, ceremony on here, uh, Procession. Um, she's lost control. There's quite a few um, Joy Division tracks on here. Passover, and it's really enjoyable. There's um, some quite funny sort of interplay with the audience um, during the songs. Peter Hook, um, bit of a wisecracker, uh, bit of a character. Love him or hate him. I'd like to see Peter Hook and the Light Live. So I'm sure I'll get the opportunity. Um, in the next couple of years. So, good album, recommend it. If you ever see that one floating around. Um, I've got this one. It's sort of classed as a, an EP, but I'm gonna call it an album. Quadra State from 1989. So, Graham Massey, of course, um, the main sort of guy in 808 State. Um, so, this was in 89. It's got the Pacific State on here, which was um, a commercial success. And this just sounds fantastic. It's just a, if you want to know what Friday nights in Manchester sounded like in 89, then uh, give this one a listen. So yeah, 808 State there on Creed Records. Another record I wanted to talk about was this one, Pete Shelley. So we spoke about the Buscocks before, XL1, and this is from 1983, Pete Shelley's second album. So when this was released, it was, um, it came out with um, a computer program um, for a ZX Spectrum, and you could download that um, on your cassette player, I suppose, through your TV, like we used to do. Um, and it was uh, lyrics and graphics, so pretty ahead of its time. Uh, telephone operators on here. Um, and again, this is an album. It's very sort of early 80s sounding. Um, and I think maybe 10 years ago, you'd listen to this and think it sounded really dated. But listening back to this, um, it's I think it's dated pretty well. And there's the undercurrent of those great Buscock songs, uh, What Was Heaven, uh, You Know Better Than I Know, I Just Want to Touch. You can sort of hear a little bit of the Buscock's magic, but it is obviously um, with an early 80s sound. 
I enjoyed this album. It's uh, again, uh, I picked it up for six quid um, earlier this year, uh, and it's a, a really good listen. So yeah, XL One by Pete Shelley, who sadly passed away, uh, maybe a couple of years now. Um, here's a, a guy who's renowned in Manchester, John Cooper Clark, and uh, this album's called Disguise in Love. So. Um, John Cooper Clark is the Manchester punk poet. He's still alive. He must be in his seventies now. Um, great sense of humour, intelligent lyrics, a real one-off. Um, side two starts off with "I married a monster from outer space." Psycho sluts is on here. I've got a brand new tracksuit. You know, you get the idea. Valley of the Lost Woman. Strange Bedfellows. A <laughs> really good album, this. Uh, picked it up from a record fair a few years ago. Um, I was lucky enough, first gig I ever went to was Elvis Costello at the Free Trade Hall in 1979. And uh, John Cooper Clark supported Elvis Costello. <laughs> he was great. So, yeah, well worth checking out if you're not aware of John Cooper Clark. The Manchester punk poet. Couple more to go. Ian Brown. Unfinished Monkey Business. So this album, I think it's 98. So the Stone Roses, of course. Um, iconic Manchester band. But Ian Brown's got a pretty solid um, solo career behind him. Still releasing stuff. They release an album maybe every five years. Uh, My Star's on here. Uh, Can't See Me. Corpse is in their mouth. Nah Nah song, pretty strong album, um, all his albums are pretty strong, I'm not sure whether he's actually done anything <laughs> anything like the Stone Roses debut, pretty solid Ian Brown album, Unfinished, Unfinished Monkey Business from 98, uh, finally, got a certain ratio here, so this is an album that I picked up last year, I just wanted to give it another plug, sort of, um, a really, really good album here uh, by the Manchester band formed in 1977. So this is this was the first album for 12 years. Um, it didn't disappoint. I think it's my favourite certain ratio album. So it comes with uh, some nice imagery as well and all the other albums, etc. I do have quite a few. So, Mick Joyce from the Smiths plays on here. Denise Johnson, sadly, uh, passed away last year. She features on four tracks. Um, great vocal. Um, and this is well worth checking out, this album. I think this is another one that kind of slipped under under the radar. But um, I think I had it at number five for my best albums of 2020. And it's still getting play. And uh, I'm still sort of discovering it every time I play it. So yeah, uh, really good album, ACR Loco by a certain ratio. So there's 10 Manchester artists. Um, there was a, a question that um, Brandy wanted us to know, um, wanted to know a song about Manchester. So I wanna show this album, Elbow, one of my favorite Manchester al uh, bands. I always, I've got a thing about not wanting to buy albums on vinyl when I've got them on CD, however difficult that is, because this is a fantastic album. And the first track is uh, Station Approach, which is about Guy Garvey coming back to Manchester, really, when he's been away and getting on the bus and um, just feeling at home in Manchester. So Guy Garvey, a great lyricist, and, um, you know, a lot of his songs sort of feature Manchester. So yeah, Station Approach from this really good album by Elbow, Leaders of the Free World. And finally, Randy is a bit of a traveller, so because of Covid obviously he's not been able to, to jet set about. I think he mentioned that he's been to 45 countries um, and I was totting up how many countries I've been to. And I think I got to 11, which is kind of embarrassing really. And I was including Wales and Scotland in those 11. Uh, Denmark, Holland, Germany, France, Spain, Portugal, Turkey, 
Greece and Bulgaria. I think they were my 11. So he wanted us to mention a place that we'd love to go to. Now, I'm going to mention a place that I've been to many times, and uh, it's Amsterdam. So on this Coldplay album, great album, Rush of Blood to the Head, a track called Amsterdam. There's quite a few songs called Amsterdam. Um, and in 2012, I was in a relationship with somebody from the Netherlands, and um, it was an amazing time. And I, I'd never been to Amsterdam before. And I went a number of times, every time I went, whether it's just because I was with her, but um, just a magical place. Forget about the sort of red light district and, and all that, you know, the galleries and just the whole vibe of the city. The whole vibe of the Netherlands for me is just um, the best. Um, and I'd love to go back, um, however difficult that might be. But yeah, um, Amsterdam, probably my favourite place in the world apart from Oldham. <laughs> so um, that's my entry to uh, Randall's contest. Oh, that was okay, Randall. Again, if you're not aware of Randall Nelson, go and check out his channel. I think he's approaching um, 300 subscribers now. So, uh, and he's somebody who always sort of takes the time to comment on my videos and uh, I do enjoy his channel. So pleasure to do this video. So thanks for watching. If you've got any comments about the records I showed, I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching and bye for now.